Gentlemen, welcome to game two between Hawk and Artosis, upper left-hand corner, as Artosis kills bugs. Artosis as the pink Terran. High turn right, bottom left-hand corner. We have Hawk starting as the red Zerg. This is going to be on Longinus. Kind of a what if from BSL 15. And I feel like I got to give my proper dues. Someone in chat mentioned NASL days. Artosis and a lot of the other guys that were part of uh, NASL Season 1, Andre, Red Torp, uh, Mr. Bitter, Rotterdam, White Raw, Moltrap, all those guys will always have a special place in my heart. I think one of the most incredible moments of my entire life was being at the end of NASA, NASL Season 1 Finals and hearing people chant Puma's name. And I think up to that point, everybody who had been in esports, I mean, Artosis was, I think, not that long prior to that, sleeping in apartment floors in Korea with like five other random esports guys. And it sort of felt like all of the guys that had been involved pushing the uh, metaphorical boulder up the hill, or I guess kind of a tug of war, pulling the rope to make esports happen. It felt like in that moment, it was like the boulder went over the hill. I think it's uh, Robbie Ghostclaw out there. He's an, I think he's still an admin for Team Liquid. Has an iconic picture of Artosis in that time. And I actually remember that moment exclusively because I was standing to his left by like two feet. And I love StarCraft too, but my heart has always been with Brood War. And it's one of those things where I, I participated a lot in StarCraft II, wanted to see esports get established, and I, my hope was always that Brood War would be the next in line. That it would uh, eventually cycle back and Brood War would be much like it is in Korea at some stage. And I don't know if that will ever be the case, but it does feel like with these guys, with guys like Hawk, with guys like Zero, it's like being, uh, it's like we all have our back to that boulder. We all have our hands on the rope, and there's something about that that I just love. And you, the viewers, make it happen too. So with that, I'm going to say, yeah, support BSL, support Artosis, support Hawk, support your favorite streamers, support me, if you can. And uh, if nothing else, follow your passion in life. Because I think that's uh, where you follow your passions, whatever it is. It's what makes life worth living. So yeah, follow your passions and remember the little people, if you can. All about passionate people and passionate things. With that rant, we have Artosis setting up. He's already got a gas, and he's going to go factory first. Are we going to see 1-1-1? Last time I saw Artosis, or sorry, last time I saw 1-1 versus Hawk, he actually struggled a little bit with it. Ended up losing a number of early overlords, and right now he doesn't have an overlord in position to confirm. Also pulling the drone back. It looks like he is cycling in to three hatch play once again. And an early vulture in particular could be devastating. We'll try to keep eyes because there are versions of this that, I mean, it's possible we'll see more of a fantasy style build. But no, we're going to see, yes, yeah, so we got a, com a command center that's going to be floated out. Very likely an initial vulture. SCV confirming, and I think Artosis has to love what he sees. Third hatchery in base. And this is what I'm saying. Tournament Artosis is not ladder Artosis. Expect anything from him. Love him as a competitor. We do have a preventative creep colony out on the front. Idle drone. Going to be drawn back in. Tech delayer, so there is a bit of a timer as it is likely going to be a Mutalisk follow-up. First Vulture making its way across. Potentially with this edge, I think it might be able to shoot that gap and could wreak a lot of havoc, especially if this SCV is in position to tank an initial shot to allow that Vulture to come across. So this Zergling being able to box out that SCV could be critical. SCV moving its way along that corner. Vulture coming along the edge, waiting for that SCV to make its roundabout. Actually, never mind. Revealed by with an attack over the corner wall. So instead of testing the front, drones now blocking that edge. Hydralisten being built by Hawk to deal with additional potential run-bys. Drone taking some shots. 
with the vision of the SCV over the wall. Love it. I think this SCV, or sorry, this drone, potentially at risk with range. Zerglings coming across the corner. Evolution Chamber being dropped as well. I think there is a recognition. Second factory being dropped, waiting on upgrades here. SCV gets wiped out, but is he able to confirm that first Hydralisk taking the front should be able to bully that Vulture back. Nartosis not babysitting that Vulture, so taking some free shots. More Vultures out on the field. Third factory plopping down, so it looks like it is going to be pure mech. Which means it is going to be a macro race. Armory plopping down. And Hawk is opting for the Hydralisk route. This is one of those lineups that really is a test of skill. Speed Vultures slipping through the lines. Hydralisk there to greet them, but not before one, two, three drones are taken out and massive disruption at the main. Sortos is getting some free damage. The Vulture's still alive. Cycling around, seeing what more they can get. Are they going to be able to pick off some of these drones mining gas? Definitely disrupting a lot of the mining at the main, which is critical in a mech versus mass race. Vulture is cleaned up, but not before gas has been cleared out. This is a lot of delayed gas mining time. Really slowed. Every little bit helps, but definitely slowed Hawk down. Goliath starting to take the field. Oftentimes, what you will see in this matchup is just straight Goliath mass versus some combination, oftentimes, of Hydralisks and Muta. And the question is, is who has more? And who has the easier time microing from there? One thing... I have not seen, which I kind of want to see in this match, and I'm wondering if Artosis is going to do it, is maybe some early mine placement and some field selection from there. Because it can be very difficult to make sure that you have proper Overlord coverage in all this action. The Vulture's testing the front, trying to get eyes on initial Hydralisk counts. Third Factory's whirling. Starport, so cancellation, we do see a Starport being built. as well as an engineering bay. So respecting the potential Muta switch, but right now, as things stand, Hawk down about 15 supply, and both players massing up. Siege tank out on the field. And it looks like it is gonna be a mix of siege tanks and Goliaths. Artos Artosis respecting the potential Mutalisk threat. A little bit early on the timing. But I th don't think you can be too careful against Hawk's Mutalisks. Just in case there was a backstab opportunity. Queen's Nest being dropped. So Hawk thinking about just going for two base Hive play. One thing that shuts Mech down hard is Dark Swarm. But that is going to be reliant on the fact that Artosis is going to play from a more defensive posture and not get aggressive and go for a bust. Which very likely might be the case as we see a second armory being dropped and a science facility also being placed. Potentially suggesting we're going to see longer play. A single mule wandering up to go ahead and get scouting information. Dies rapidly, but gets wind of three factories, some Siege Chanks, and Goliaths. At least recognizes that it's not pure Goliath Force. And with that, realizing that Artosis is playing a little bit lighter and more upgrade heavy, Hawk feeling safe to go ahead and grab that hatchery. See Overlord Speed online just in case those Ultras were getting mines out on the map. So Artosis planning a little bit longer game. He does have that plus one weapons. But Hawk going ahead and establishing that inside 5 o'clock base. I also wonder if Hawk is going to upgrade Ventral Sacks to go ahead and get potential Overlord drops down the line. Because one thing about Mech is it is slow. So if you have a drop threat 
Particularly on this map where the, you have just very droppable areas. In the back corners on Longinus. A couple mines being planted here and there. Vultures shortly potentially will discover this additional base. We'll see if Hydralisks engage them. Hawk being very diligent to go ahead and clear mines. But basically having even a eight Hydralisks that are constantly moving back and forth, it can be a absolute frustration for any Terran player. Single Zergling, able to just chill with these Vultures. It's nice to see that there's a bit of peace out in the world. In this world of war. Hawk clearing out, making sure Artosis doesn't get any bonus vision. More tanks and Goliaths taking the field. Second machine shot being dropped, and we're now at five factories. Hive tech on the way for Hawk. I don't know that Artosis realizes this double gas is up. And here's the other thing. If Hawk can get that double gas mining, it will be very difficult for Artosis to take the match from there. Mines planted nearly every place else. Decent supply lead for Artosis. Evolution Chamber is there to potentially beef these Hydralisks up. They do have level 1 Carapace. Which will help a bit against this mech army. Hawk going ahead and clearing out Vision where he can and grabbing yet another base. At the inside 6 o'clock location. So he's grabbed the bases, but can he hold them? Artosis moving out. I believe he's going to hit as level 2... I think this might be a level 2 weapons, level 1 army, level 1 armor, pincer attack. Staging to potentially go ahead and grab his third base. But if he doesn't get a move on and Hawk grabs this double gas, could be very, very frightening. Com satting forward. Hawk engaging with some initial Hydralis just to get a look at the army as it's pressing forward. Tanks bullying these Hydralis back. Vultures in hot pursuit. Now, does Hawk have enough to stop Artosis? Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor online. Hawk in the red at a very dangerous moment. Hawk has grabbed additional bases, but can he hold them? This is a lot of tanks. Seven tanks engaging a Hydralis army that I don't think Hawk wants to fight this heads up. He's got to wait. Potentially for Swarm, but as soon as Swarm takes the field, it could be a complete swing. Some Queens flying out. Two Broodlings, as I said in game one, and wow! Out of nowhere, sweeping in, completely wiping out the Siege Tank force. Still some Goliaths and Siege Tanks remaining. I do believe this is Hawk's preferred counter to mech play. And you can see why. However, he needs to babysit these queens. Several of them picked off, which is a lot of gas to lose. Artosis re-engaging, looking to go ahead and barrel down towards the natural expansion. That's also going to put the mineral only at risk. Hydralisks grouping up. But plenty of siege tanks to smatter everything. The queens mostly eliminated from that previous engagement. So Artosis potentially with an engagement point, doesn't look like there's enough energy on these queens and they're just exposed and getting taken out. Third base up and running for Artosis as well, which means he does have the economy to sustain this. Taking out the mineral only. Hawk going for a counterattack, slipping some Hydalus to try to draw that army back. Single siege tank there. Some mines going to delay, allowing that siege tank to go ahead and hammer away at this Hydralis force. You can see Hawk trying to spread these Hydralis out to mitigate the siege tank damage. Both tanks taken out. Command center is exposed. Is this going to draw the troops back, though? Mineral only is already gone. SCVs battling those Hydralis back. And Artosis still applying the pressure. Hydralis engaging some of that attack force to the right. Artosis landing the command center at the 9 o'clock location. Hydralis sneaking up to go ahead and assault this location. I like that Artosis is being diligent, knowing that mech is more expensive to try to keep this army well-fed in minerals and gas. However, 
I don't know that he has the ground force to save this. He's going to be forced to draw this army back, trying to set up a contain. Units being drawn up into Overlords to drop, potentially to break this. Command Center gone at the 9 o'clock. Siege Shanks working on hatcheries over that wall. And Hawk going to ignore the assault over his wall. One hatchery down. The Engineering Bay, I believe, sees the Overlords making their way up the left-hand side of the map. A Queen hunting down just waiting for energy to plop down on that Siege Shank there. A slew of mines and turrets waiting for this attack. Hawk dropping single Hydralisks, and now groups of Hydralisks losing them initially to the mines. Siege tanks there as well. And losing several Overlords in that assault. Putting in deep into the red. Artosa is able to clean that up fairly effectively. Only loses a handful of turrets, but able to take out an, an immense amount of Hawk supply. Also, that hatchery wiped out to the south. Finally getting cleaned up by some queens as they're having the energy to do so. Hawk still on three bases, still hasn't capped gas here at the inside four o'clock. And gonna call GG right there as Artosis looking overwhelming. Well played by Artosis. Great to see him take a game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.